Hey everybody, this is Andy from Tennis Euphoria and today I'm bringing you my review of the Yonex VCore Pro 97 HD. Now you might want to quickly review back onto my review of the Yonex VCore Pro 97310 for a little bit of context. In that I describe that I like Yonex isometric head shapes and that I'm a bit of a fan of Yonex rackets overall but also I explain why I think the latest update for these green versions of the V-Cores were probably all about this racket, the HD racket, as well as updating the paint job. And with that context given, I guess it's pretty exciting that the V-Core line has another denser string pattern, this being an 1820 and the HD standing for high density. Of course, in previous V-Core Pro lines, we've seen the 1620 work pattern work really well. So I was hopeful that this 1820 pattern would bring something really exciting to the table. And as you'll know from my 310 video, I tried to sort of switch between the 310 and the HD and I looked at bringing both of those rackets together on one video and that didn't really work and that was largely down to this racket. It has a little bit of adjustment time, I felt, and in switching between that and the other, I wasn't doing it justice. So here is its dedicated review. So looking at the tech, we have the VDM mesh in the handle, which supposedly reduces vibrations, and I would agree that it does that. We also have the NAMD technology, which does seem to give a great flex and kind of snap back on contact. And then we have an interesting lock boost grommet system on this racket. But of course, I suppose the big thing is, is that 1820 string pattern. The other specs that you'll sort of commonly find online, 320 unstrung weight, nice thin 20 millimeter beam again, a ridiculously low 59 RA flex, a 326 swing weight, and of course that 97 head. All sounds good. I'll give you the specs of mine strung up with dampener and overgrip later on. So getting straight into taking it on court, first of all, first impressions on the wall. So I guess two things that I noticed straight away, the flex. I mean, it is exceptionally flexible. And on the wall, I was feeling almost kind of too much dwell time and I had to adjust a little bit to that. I also though was getting something that was really maneuverable, that 20 millimeter beam, like I found in the 310, made this an exceptionally maneuverable racket, in my opinion even though we have a really healthy weight. Moving on to first casual hits on the baseline. Well, I guess that's where an initial excitement really started to grow in terms of a really nice combination of a good weight and good mass, but also that 20 millimeter beam delivers a real sort of fast and maneuverable feeling through the air. And I felt that that was a really good combination. And this racket, just kept on being a surprising racket. I was expecting one thing and then it wouldn't deliver as I expected, but it was delivering in a good way. And the first sort of revelation in that area was around that string pattern. So as you'll probably know from some of my videos, I quite like a dense pattern, but I'm always worried about launch angle with those dense patterns and will look to kind of mitigate that with strings. What I noticed immediately with this Yonex was that the launch angle, I would say, was better than most 1820s. So we have a good launch angle. I wouldn't say it's sort of similar to a lot of open patterns and a lot of 1619s, but it didn't mean that I was having to compensate in any way. What I was really, again, surprised about was that I was expecting to have to work on getting some spin. But whilst the launch angle wasn't that high, one thing I was getting was an amazing kind of kick again when the ball bounced. And certainly people I was playing with really commented on that. It sometimes took them by surprise. The ball was coming with a relatively low launch angle, but then on bounce, it would really kick up. So that kind of tells me that it's got some stored energy maybe, maybe that lock boost grommet system is at work and maybe the ball is really cutting and rotating through the air and then that power is kind of released on the bounce and I thought that was really interesting. Now expecting to have a few problems with slice as that's what I'd found with that 310, 
this delivered. I suppose that difference in swing weight and the mass combined with that maneuverable frame just meant that I could knife the ball and slice with easy depth. So two thumbs up there when it comes to slice. And then moving on to some sort of baseline points and some light matches. I guess because I was getting that great spin, I was sort of intrigued as to what control I would get out of the racket. But again, it really surprised me and surprised me in a good way. I was getting great control out of this and I was left with a feeling that it didn't really need any customization at all. I mean, the combination of its unstrung weight, the swing weight, um, and that thin beam is really good, kind of right up my alley. You can hit out and hit flat with great control. You can pick your targets. And then when need be, you can kind of defend and take people uh, by surprise almost because of that kickback, the really surprising spin level that it gives you. And then touch shots and volleys probably unsurprisingly is really good with such a control and sort of feel orientated racket. I certainly felt it to be nice and stable at net and I could actually drop shot pretty effectively with this racket and I don't really use drop shot that much so I thought that was a good sign. And on serve we have good mass in the racket, that thin beam makes it really manoeuvrable and fast through the air. I could swing it as fast as I wanted to and after a small adjustment period I was hitting targets on my first serve with good pace and maybe that lock booster grommet system was also enabling me to hit some good sort of slice out wide serves and also some good kick second serve. So no complaints on serve really, I thought it was fantastic. So everything's really rosy, isn't it? What a racket. But here's the things to think about. So it is exceptionally flexible, very, very comfortable as a result. The combination of that circa 59 RA and the VDM mash does make it exceptionally comfortable. I was having no twinges at all in my arm with various strings. But I think that does lead to a bit of an adjustment time. So my early sort of hits, no matter what the session, I always got a feeling of almost the ball being sort of pocketed on the strings for too long. It almost was like things were in slow motion for a second before there was any snapback and the ball released. Now that ended up being something that I loved, and but it was very much something that I had to get used to each time. And I guess that adjustment period was kind of more compounded probably because of my preconceptions. I mean, I thought 1820 racket, low launch angle, great control. It does deliver in those areas, but it also delivers that great spin and it delivers a bit more power than I expected. So I guess it was a case of I was going into it each time with preconceptions that weren't really the case and it played a bit differently to how the specs would suggest in my view. So again, it just took a little bit of time to adjust. But what I was finding was that the more that I was adjusting to it and the more that I was hitting with it, the more I was enjoying it and the more I was playing better with it. I would almost say that my kind of progression of liking it and developing with it was very linear. It was just getting better, better and better. And that led me to one real solid conclusion. I think this is a absolutely fantastic racket if you are going to commit to it. Uh, if you're someone like me who is playtesting different rackets all the time, then it ultimately is a little bit unique and a bit different. So it isn't something that you can pick up and kind of play with and then go and pick something else and kind of play with. I think it is a racket that you need to pick, choose, commit to, um, and then you'll have a really good time. Another reason to view it in that way is Yonex have just done it again with regards to the quality control. So I bought two. I always tend to buy two if I'm going to review something. If I think a racket in terms of specs could be something that becomes my racket or something I could switch to. The specs of this and I guess the hype around it led me to that. And in terms of the quality control, absolutely fantastic. I've got a photo here for you to see, but it all just matched up really, really well. I mean, one gram difference with regards to strings over grip dampener and the dampeners were different and the strings were different. I think that's pretty good swing weight, the same balance, the same. 
So for someone who's serious about their game and is trying to develop their game and is looking for their weapon of choice, it's a really, really good option. It's not for me because I can't really have a weapon of choice that is so kind of particular and almost kind of unique to use. But that is only because I spend a lot of time doing this, picking up different rackets and reviewing them. And just a note on strings, I experimented with a few strings. They were all green because I just thought that looked good in the racket, but Selenko Hyper-G I thought worked pretty well but I ended up arriving at a head link 16 gauge at about 51 pounds and I felt that further kind of compounded a little bit of power and it also compounded that really nice surprise effect of some kick up uh, off the bounce which was hard for opponents to deal with. Comparing it to other rackets I guess is quite kind of difficult because I do view it as being sort of fairly unique. Um, I would say that it is playing quite similar to something that I'm hitting with just on occasions. I'm going to review it in about three or four rackets time and that is the Head Gravity Pro. I guess there's some sort of similarities there. Um, I suppose it has a almost a similar kind of flex feel to the Wilson blade, but I've only hit the, the 1619 version of the Wilson blade, so I'm wondering whether that V7 1820 blade might be similar. Uh, the obvious comparison for me would be the uh, new head Graphene 360 Plus Prestige MP. And I guess there is some comparisons there. Uh, might surprise you, but I would go with the Prestige over this one. That's just one of my favorite rackets of all time. And I don't want to take anything away from this Yonex because I think this Yonex is great. So in summary then, really clever racket in my view, really well made. It gives you lots of sort of different qualities that you wouldn't expect. The control of an 1820, the kind of weight and stability that you're looking for if you've got an advanced game. It's also really whippy and maneuverable, sort of surprisingly so. Uh, and when you need it, you can get some great power and spin out of it. So it really is a fantastic racket. I guess if you're um, a baseliner just looking for a power and spin monster, maybe you'd look elsewhere. But I think most people will want a fairly all-rounded game and this will be a racket that most people will really enjoy. I do think it will have a big adjustment period and I think that if you do go for it, then you're going to need to stick to it. But if you do, it's the sort of racket that will help you develop your game. It will kind of grow up with you. Hope you enjoyed the review. Please subscribe and like as there'll be plenty more racket reviews over the next few weeks and a few tennis fitness videos for you soon. See you soon.